what a lot of disinformation is about. In many cases, with disinformation, that is the actual goal. We were on Instagram, and it was about this plane crash that literally the plane turned mm, yeah. around. The question from ChatGPT. <laughs> Right. So, can you uh, tell about your, yourself a little bit? Uh, so, my name is Rudolf Temin. I don't know, you probably saw it there. Yeah. Um, I started off um, in pen testing. I had a company, uh, started a company with a friend of mine called SensePost. Um, uh, they now recently, uh, recently, a couple of years ago, Uh, they sold to Ari, mm -hmm. and so they are now a pen testing team within uh, Orange uh, Cyber Defense. Okay. Uh, so my background is uh, is from pen testing and uh, breaking into computers, but when I still had lots of hair um, and I was young <laughs> uh, and. Uh, Uh, about in 2000. So we started the company in 2000. Um, and then I left in 2008 um, to, to start a company called Patarva, mm -hmm. um, which is not, nobody really knows Patarva well, but they know the product that we bought, mm -hmm. um, which is called Maltigo. And so I started being in Maltigo and, um, you know, how data is connected and graphical integration, mm -hmm. those kind of things. And then I left in 2018, I actually sold my my shares in the company and I exited. It's now it's now a German company that that uh, I took it over, and I started this company called uh, Work Teamwork. And we had lots of different iterations of the same kind of software. And we're now on the last iteration, which uh, we call Ubicron. Okay. And that's the stuff that I was showing, mm -hmm. which is like where we integrate AI with, you know, um, data that you capture and you can ask questions. Yeah, I saw your presentation is very, very uh, good. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what is your so you moving from uh, security to now mostly on AI and uh, data? No, I wouldn't say, I mean, I wouldn't say AI, everybody's like AI. AI. <laughs> you know, well, we thought it did, you know, Um, AI was a good fit for what we were doing because you know it's in. Yeah. Obviously, you're reading a lot of stuff, yes. and you got to remember details yeah. and, and all of that stuff is like hidden away and things that you forgot about. Mm -hmm. But the AI can read all of that with you, and it's nice to have a system mm -hmm. in there that, that basically remembers the stuff that you, the pages. You know, when you browse a web page, it remembers where you've been and, and what you've seen, and it doesn't kind of get tired of you asking the same question. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why we added in. But my, so my interest these days are a lot on, you know, influence campaigns and specifically like attribution on that. No. When there is an influence campaign, people would say, um, you know, who's behind this? Mm. So then there's there's a lot of always oh, into kind of read all, all the messages and things, you know, oh, who's actually pulling the strings on this information campaign, on this influence campaign. Mm. Uh, And that in the last couple of years, really the stuff that's been mm. super interesting. For me. Yeah. So yeah, so AI. Everyone talk about AI. And what do you think about um, the impact of AI in cybersecurity? Well, I mean, I, like I said, I can really only talk about it in the in OS inside yeah. of things, which is not per se cybersecurity. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I spoke to someone briefly. Uh, in the break, yeah. that that is using AI specifically for cybersecurity, mm -hmm. um, and you know he was saying he basically take a repo, he wraps it up as a rag item and ask the AI if there's any bugs in it, then ask it to write a, a proof of concept, and then sends it as a bug bounty. I was like, man, that sounds like a great idea. You just automate the whole thing. Exactly. And you have this thing that just, you know, goes by itself. Obviously, it's not that easy um, because there are some very subtle things that you've got to look into. And I haven't done that, so I, I can't really tell you, hey, these are the issues. Um, I can tell you within, within uh, influence campaigns, 
where well, how AI works with the name. Um, I did a project a year ago specifically on that, mm -hmm. um, and w when it's about um, when it's about influence campaigns and, and disinformation within AI, that, that's something that's very powerful because it can create those campaigns by itself and it can um, run those campaigns by itself and it doesn't need a human uh, to to do oversight yeah. because it, it you know it can it's really good writing mm -hmm. writing text and, and creating images and it, even in the last few years we saw that you know things like how if you look at mid journey and um, Delhi and things like this how the the, the uh, content creation stuff mm -hmm. um, has gone from where it is really easy to see that it's generated by AI to where now it becomes really hard to see the difference, even with video. You know, was, um, I think it's called Son Sonar. Yeah, is like is is remarkable. Yeah, and when that stuff is used as this information, um, it becomes difficult to to really see the difference between them. Like, people will still see it, but like you know, you can create so much of it mm. that it becomes difficult to 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 kind of like tell what's real and what's not. And I think that with in many cases with this information that is the actual goal. The goal is not to make you believe something else. Mm -hmm. The goal is to confuse you mm -hmm. so that when the real truth comes out, you know, people People don't know exactly if it's real or not. You know, as as a, as a point the other day, you know, I was browsing a reel on Instagram, and it was about this plane crash that literally the plane turned mm, yeah. around. And I was like, man, this is AI generated. I'm sure it's AI generated. And it turned out it was real. And when we get to the point where we can't tell the two apart anymore, that's really what a lot of the disinformation is about. It's not so much making you believe in one thing, it's mm -hmm. making you doubt the truth. Yeah. So if you think about this information and AI, mm -hmm. that's exactly what it was. That plane that turned around, that is exactly what it is. I don't know what's real and what's yeah. true. Anymore. And I think that's the real risk. Yeah. So yeah, so um, deep fake, fake news, mm. misinformation, mm. you know, how we can, do you think there should be a regulation for for that because you don't want so, that yeah. negative impact yeah. on society you know so so my my feeling on that is that um you know in the past you would have a you would have news sources that you trusted yeah. you'd be like oh i know yeah. this guy yeah. he wrote this yeah, thing yeah. and then you know when he writes this I know it's been yeah. vetted because the newspaper has some kind of a reputation. Mm -hmm. But then we kind of shifted in in you know the last ten years mm -hmm. or so to a point where you know everybody with a cell phone is taking a picture yeah. and when there's a riot, someone says, Hey, there's the riot mm -hmm. and, and we know it's real because he took a picture of yeah. it and he was there. But now we are now in a, in a stage where we can't tell if that picture is real or not. So I think we're going to go back to a situation where you're going to have your trusted sources. Yeah. You're going to be like, well, I get my news from there, and if it's not from there, I can't know if it's real. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a there's a move back to that point yeah. where we're now going back to trusted sources. Yeah. And maybe that's okay. Maybe it's not. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, at least we, what, you, what you now get, I think what you now get is you yeah. get a situation where we can't have the, we can't consume news that quickly. Yes, yes, yes. Because we used to be like, oh, there was yeah. someone with a camera and we saw so there is a threat off. But now yeah. it has to be verified again yeah, and, yeah. and it needs to be verified again. Yeah. So we're losing that impact of like crowdsourcing yeah. our, our news. Yeah. But what we gain is now we know it's real or not. It's almost like I think what's happening. Yeah, yeah I think educate the society give up awareness about that i think it's uh, also the key but again with technology you know moving very fast yeah so so yeah there is a risk okay the goals for me to interview you here is because you are a figure for <laughs> <laughs> for uh, cyber security in the past now we move on to the 
AI or uh, what do you call it? Influencer. Influencer, yeah. yeah. So, uh, my patient is to um, encourage young people to, you know, to be in cybersecurity field. Okay. Yeah, so uh, for them to be interesting in cybersecurity, interesting in their career in cybersecurity. Sure. Because uh, we still have a shortage in, uh, in the talent of uh, cybersecurity, not only in Indonesia, I think world. So, can you give an advice to this young generation how to be, you know, in this field, and then what you going to expect in this field, and then what is the future of this? Uh, sure. I mean, I, I I think it's a great time to get into to get into tech uh, and in security as well, because we we all of a sudden have a very different. It's very different to when you know when I got into it. Uh, we have so the, 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 you know as a start the space is so wide. You know, if you look at me, I started like with writing exploits to where I'm now looking at influence and OSN, yeah. and it's we all in the same. We basically all sit in the same bus, right? Mm -hmm. We're getting off at different mm -hmm. stops, but we all sit in the same bus, yeah. right? Um, so I think. The field now is so wide that you can pick something that you're really interested in and you can go really deep into that field. Um, and there's a lot more to choose from mm. than there was, you know, in my days. Mm. We didn't have AI, we didn't have, we didn't have, we, we probably didn't even have social networks mm. to the point where we have it now. So I think it's a nice time to get into it. A, and B, I think the second thing is we have tools now that makes it, that makes it a lot more scalable to do something. I mean, you can you can use some of the AI tools now. Like I said, with this guy that yeah. did the thing on the repos, I said, like, man, that sounds like a great plan. You know, two years ago, two years ago, you wouldn't be able to no, do that. Yeah. Right? Oh, well, we're not talking 20 years ago. Yeah. We're saying two years ago, you couldn't do that. Right? So I think it's a, it's a super interesting time to be able to build something that scales really big. You know, you're now sitting here and saying, well, you know, a lot, all of the American, all of the big companies are American tech companies in this. I think we're in a point where, if you have the right ingredients in, in this in this thing in this box, with the tech that we have available, uh, available for scaling um, things, and not just scaling in storage and processing power, but even in like cognitive power in terms of the AI stuff, you can all of a sudden build stuff that competes with. Uh, a really big tech company in America by having a really great idea. Yes. Yeah, they run their stuff on AWS yeah, and yeah, like yeah. Azure and all those, but you have it as well. Yeah. The the the, the playing field is level, you know. So if you have a good idea and you have a, a strong idea, um, you can use exactly the same infrastructure mm -hmm. that all of the big players are using for their idea. Yeah. And you can bring it to market really quickly. So in terms of in terms of that I think it's a fantastic time to be alive, you know. And 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 lastly, the last thing that I will say about this is, you can make mistakes now and pivot to something else really quickly. Mm. In my days, you started yes, off with a thing, and then you have to you had to kind of go in there. You know, that's that's your thing now. You really got to start it now. You could be like, I'm trying this. Oh, this doesn't work. I want to go to this. I want to pivot to this. You can really change around and find your niche where this, you know, the particular thing that you want to do. And why can you change it? Because we have all of this tech that makes it a, that makes it easy to just move around really quickly. Okay. I think uh, anyone who wants to start can start everywhere because the yeah. resource is there. Yeah? Yeah. I think AI is a real uh, game changer. Yeah? I think so too. Yeah. I, I, I do believe that you need to have a fundamental like skill level that's mm -hmm. like you need to have a you need to have fundamentals that says mm -hmm. okay well you understand networking you understand yeah. you have a little bit of programming knowledge mm -hmm. you know you have a um, some knowledge about how these things sit together mm -hmm. I think it really helps mm -hmm. because then when you know 
you have a hallucination or whatever within the AI, you will know that it's yeah. talking nonsense right now. And if you don't have a solid technical background, then you might go off in a direction yeah. that's completely... <laughs>